Hello, I am Dr. Carrie Schlachter, this is Dr. Melanie Tissier, and this is Linus. And we're here today in Petaluma, California at Circle Oak Equine to talk to you about ultrasound of the hind suspensory. So in ultrasounding the hind suspensory, there's a number of tools that will help you document any sort of injury you might find and also help you get a good image. The first is a good quality ultrasound machine. The second is a linear probe. This is a 15 megahertz linear probe. Um, the third would be some good quality ultrasound gel. A standoff is often beneficial, especially in um, smaller horses. In some horses, larger horses, or horses with really swollen legs, or just if you can't clip, um, anything you can't get a good um, image quality in, a um, convex probe would help you out. This is a mid-convex, 8 megahertz mid-convex probe. And then there's a 5 megahertz uh, macro-convex probe that can also help you out um, to get a good image. The other things that I use for a, a hind suspensory ultrasound are um, a measuring tape to tell me where I am in the leg at any point in time, a dry towel to keep the excess gel off, a bucket of water uh, that will help us keep the leg moist. You can also use alcohol, especially if you're ultrasounding a non-clipped leg. The rubbing alcohol will often give you a better image than ultrasound gel. I'm going to wet the leg since it's dried out since we prepared it a few minutes ago. So to scan the hind suspensory, um, I start right underneath the chestnut on the medial aspect of the horse's leg. I line up the middle of the probe to the bottom of the chestnut on the back of the horse's leg. Um, I hold the probe um, in this position when I'm scanning the proximal third of the horse's hind suspensory. Um, and what that allows me to do is keep contact with the leg with my fourth and fifth fingers. It allows me to put good pressure on the leg using my first two fingers. So I go ahead and seat the probe, again, the middle of the probe, right underneath the chestnut. I start with it in short axis. Um, and on my ultrasound screen, what I'm attempting to get as my first reference image is an image that contains both the um, lateral splint bone and the medial splint bone. So I do that by correcting my depth and my gain so that I can see the medial, the head of the medial splint bone, the head of the lateral splint bone, the back of the cannon bone, and the origin of the suspensory ligament. Once that image is set, I'll go ahead and freeze and save that image as my base reference image and go on from there. Once I have that image, I go ahead and start scanning distally keeping the hind suspensory in my view. If I notice anything abnormal, I'll stop and go back to it and scan again. Once I've done that a couple of times, about the proximal third of the suspensory, I'll go ahead and switch into long axis. Again, putting the edge of the probe right up underneath the chestnut so that it's seated in the groove between the deep digital flexor tendon and the superficial digital flexor tendon and get a long axis image. Again, I'll be freezing and taking pictures as I go, especially if I find something abnormal or if I'm just trying to document a normal structure. And this is how I would image uh, the proximal third of the suspensory ligament. Once I get to about 18 to 20 centimeters distal from the point of the hock, and that's what I would use my measuring tape for, measuring from the point of the hock down to 18 to 20 centimeters, at that point, the lateral splint bone is small enough that you can see the entirety of the suspensory ligament from the back of the leg. So at that point, I'll go ahead and swing around to the back of the leg and continue to scan the mid-body of the suspensory from that angle. And then we'll scan all the way down to the split in the suspensory. And at the split, then I'll swing medially or laterally and scan down the branches. So at that point, if I don't have a standoff on, I'll go ahead and put a standoff on to help scan the branches of the suspensory, unless the leg is very swollen. Um, and then I'll go ahead and starting up right around that 18 to 20 or 22 centimeter mark, I'll go ahead and scan the branches. Decrease my depth, because we're looking much more superficially. Mess with my gain up or down to make sure it's still giving me a good quality image, and then scan down 
the suspensory branch and short axis, all the way to the insertion onto the sesamoid bone. Then I'll do the same on the opposite side of the leg, scanning down the branch to the insertion onto the sesamoid bone. Once I've done that in short axis, I'll go back and do the same thing in long axis. And again, I'll scan all the way down to the insertion onto the sesamoid bone, taking pictures as I go of anything that's abnormal. So when I have a lesion, when I find a problem in the suspensory, then what I will do is I'll go back to that area. I'll probably take an image just a centimeter or two above it, where I would consider it to be more normal. And then I would drop down into the worst part of the image. And at that level, I would go ahead and measure how distal am I from the point of the hawk. Um, and I would take a measurement and an image of that. And then I would go to the next normal spot in the ligament and take a measurement and image of that so that I have a documented normal, documented abnormal, and documented normal images of the lesion in the suspensory. If there's more than one lesion, then I'll do that for each of the injuries. Um, I will also use the clip function that this machine has oftentimes, especially in a situation when there's abnormal images. I'll just go ahead and uh, video the whole abnormal section. If I'm in a situation where I'm not sure if there is an injury or if I want to investigate the ligament more fully, I'll ask the horse to go into a non-weight-bearing position. To do a non-weight-bearing scan, we don't want to use the standoff, so we'll take that out and then ask Linus to step into a non-weight-bearing position. Good boy. A lot of horses will do this very nicely for you. And then I'll go ahead and start directly from the back of the leg and scan down the leg. In this situation, I'm using the flexor tendons as my standoff. And it allows me to get a very good image of the cannon bone. And that would complete the exam of a suspensory ligament. Thank you for watching the video. This is Dr. Carrie Schlachter, Dr. Melanie Tissier, and Linus telling you that for more information, please go to sonocyte.com backslash veterinary.